Welcome to worship on this beautiful snowy morning. Uh, let us open with prayer. Well, we thank you for the opportunity to have roads that are passable, the chance to come together in the midst of inclement weather. Just pray that you will come warm not only our physical bodies, but warm our hearts with your Holy Spirit during this worship time. In Christ's name, amen. Our announcements, um, we have um, like a brief, uh, Jim would like a brief um, Christian formation, music, prayer, and worship meeting uh, immediately following worship service in the Youngman Lounge. Uh, I'm going to cancel that meeting. Okay, that meeting has just been canceled. Stay <laughs> tuned. Um, and um, we are in the midst of trying to, uh, with weather and COVID, um, stay tuned for announcement on uh, when adult uh, adult Sunday school class might uh, might be starting up. So we'll get that information out. Uh, as quickly as possible. And uh, I believe that's it on the announcements from. Let us continue worship with the singing of hymn number 514, Come Spirit Come. And 
please feel free to stand, uh, those of you who are with us, if you were able. Christ is the truth, the way. Verses 8, and I think I'm just going to go straight 1 through 10.
when the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled as one man in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which is made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Beside him on his right stood Matthiah, Shermah, Ananiah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Maseiah. And on his left were Pediah, Mishael, Machiah, Hashem, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. And I might have gotten one of those right. <laughs> Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akib, Shabiatha, Hodiai, Matkiah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, and Peleah instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people could understand what was being read. Then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, this day is sacred to the Lord, your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve for the Lord, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the reading, the reading of God's holy words. I will continue with uh, Psalm 19 in response in number 788. The heavens are telling the glory of God. Day to day pours forth speech. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth. In the heavens, he has a tent for the sun. Which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course for Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. And nothing is hidden from its feet. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and dripping as Moreover, by them is your ser servant warned. 
In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Their way and their faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have the angel from you. Then I shall be blameless. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us pray. Lord, as we seek to hear your word in our hearts, prepare them through your Holy Spirit, that we can understand the word as it later comes to us. We ask these things in Christ's name. Let us continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the glory forever. Our next hymn is number 108, How Lovely on the Mountains, and that's in our great Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 31. Again, that's 1 Corinthians 12, 
12 through 31, you have the page numbers here in the form. Unity and diversity in the body. Just as a body through one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are, un, that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If the part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part, is, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the holy of Christ. I'm sorry. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. This is the word of the Lord.
thank you for the opportunity to give back in a small proportion that which you have given to us. Help us to maintain a generous spirit for those around us, for those in our community, for those in our nation, and for those in our world. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Our congregational prayer and prayers time is upon us. And if there are any to share, now will be the time. Let us go to the Lord. Yes. Um, this week is the Midwinter Conference. Okay. And so a lot of one of my pastors are gathering in Chicago and uh, pray for safety for the COVID. Um, and also for uh, a renewal. We will add in praise for those of us who are, have recovered well from varied sicknesses. Pray for all the crisis in the world, and all the things that yeah. are going on. And watch the news, it just makes me want to cry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Mary, that, uh, mentioned the uh, various worldwide events that, that are uh, upon us and uh, let us pray Lord we do ask that your spirit would be on him and her grandchildren as they continue to grieve and learn to live without their father and son Lord we just pray that you'll be with them that you will give them the needed first of your spirit. We do thank you for the Midwinter Conference, the blessing of pastors and lay leaders gathering together to share, to pray, to seek wisdom, and to seek your face. And we ask that you will bring them together safely, that you will guard them from COVID and other sicknesses, Grant them travel mercies as they come from many parts of the country. Lord, we think of and praise you for recovering from sickness, uh, whatever it may be, may be. We pray for continued healing and reduction in the passing of COVID. We pray for mental health for those who are stuck inside, for those who are perhaps stuck with those who may be abusive. We think of those who are scared. We just pray that you will give the right measure of your grace to each of them to face the challenges that they face. We also ask for communal wisdom of the political arms of nations, that you would also grant our political leaders wisdom, that you provide a way for compromise to occur where needed. We think of the Ukraine where there are lots of rumblings, concerns, many other nations that have facing political turmoil, oppression, and those who are facing weather issues, the volcano this week in Tonga. We just thank you that you are bigger than all of these things and that you will are sovereign. We just ask these things in Christ's name. Thank 
just uh, welcome Pastor Ed for those who may not have been with us last week or Ed Pickford is our interim pastor and he will be leading us through the rest of the service. I was here early. I tried to uh, use the original pulpit, uh, portable, but uh, it's not big, big enough. It moves around, and uh, so we'll, we'll stick with this. Uh, readings again to congregation here and online. Uh, my wife is not with me. She may be here once a month. She has uh, duties at her own church. Uh, that she has to be there, but uh, I will tell you, and I said the same thing to her, but uh, she said she had a good feel uh, with your church and with you people here, being here last week, and she looks forward to coming uh, back again. And Janelle, that prelude was beautiful. I checked, it's not in either one of the hymnals. I, I was going to change that. We could sing that at the end, but uh, it's not there. And this is something I'm not used to, but I, I agree with it. And that is, the, you know, like the Old Testament, New Testament readings. Uh, God wants his word uh, to be heard and to be read. And I think that's a great idea. And those were two great passages. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 is one of the great ones. And as some people would say, well, that'll preach, and that, that really will preach, and I have preached on that passage, and the First Corinthians 12 passage, uh, where we, we all have a part in the, the body of, of Christ. So, uh, and I thought, first of all, I'm going to share, I made a comment last week, this is the uh, devotional that I'm using this year, last year I, I used John Newton, but this is Voices from the Past, Puritan Devotional Readings. And I made mention that I get encouragement uh, from certain things that God gives me uh, to kind of confirm what's going on. And I had mentioned this uh, last Sunday, and this is the, do I have the, let's see, here we go. Because I this was my devotional on January 16th. And I, I, I quickly mentioned this, but uh, near the bottom of the devotional, as his name is, so is his nature. He is a covenant keeping God forever. And that, uh, that really oystered me last week. And then again this week, this is yesterday's. I didn't know what I gave uh, Janelle the title for the, uh, the message and the, the forever covenant. And I had not really read that anywhere, but as I was doing the devotional yesterday, uh, the scripture is Psalm 48, 14. This is God, our God, forever and ever. And at the very bottom, in a matter of fact, I may, I may just save that and use that at the end, end of the message, but the word covenant is, is mentioned again in that. So we are going to look at uh, two passages this morning because we're talking about covenant. And I actually, I, I, uh, I think I sent an email or it was a text to Sam and Warren wondering if you have a church covenant. And evidently, either you don't, or you know, it's it's been put away and hasn't been used uh, in, in years. We used to have a church covenant, uh, the Baptist Church, and they they actually softened it a little bit. They didn't like the idea of it being a covenant. Uh, I, I never understood that. Let's uh, before we begin. Uh, 
have the message and look at scripture. Let's just have a word of prayer here. Father, we ask your presence here this morning. May your spirit uh, give us listening ears. And Father, may you speak through me that my words would be your words. I just pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have uh, spent the week uh, going on a Bible and internet search for covenants. And sometimes I can get carried away. Curiosity gets the best of me. And I just keep going and going and going and going. And I gathered a ton of material, but uh, did not know the direction that God uh, wanted me to go actually until yesterday morning doing my devotions at 6 a.m. And it just like that snapped and uh, really felt this is uh, where God wants us to go. And let me also say, I'm leaving quite a bit out. Uh, I'm trying to shorten my messages. Usually, uh, they, don't, they hardly ever go more than, say, 25, 30 minutes. But uh, if I take in all the material this week, if, you, if you're saying I'm not covering certain things, that we, we'd be here, you know, we'd have to take a break at 12 and have lunch and then come <laughs> back again. So uh, I've, I've tried to cut back on this. Let me just give you, because uh, there are all kinds of definitions out there. Uh, definition, what is a covenant? And this came from a Christian uh, re resource. The term covenant is of Latin origin, meaning a coming together. That's appropriate for a church name. It presupposes two or more parties who come together to make a contract agreeing on promises, stipulations, privileges, and responsibilities. In religious and theological circles, there has not been agreement on precisely what is to be understood by the biblical term. And I, that, I ran across that all week long, uh, different ideas in relation to what does it mean in biblical terms. It is used variously in biblical contexts in political situations, it can be translated treaty. In social setting, it means a lifelong friendship agreement, or it can refer to uh, a marriage. So we are going to be using our, our Bibles this morning. I hope you follow along. If you have your, your own Bible, I would encourage you to use that. I'm old fashioned. I like to see people with their own Bibles. But uh, you have a pew Bible, and you know maybe maybe you even use a tablet or a cell phone. There's I have two Bibles on my cell phone, and I find anywhere if I'm someplace and I I have to wait and I didn't bring a book along or anything to read, I can open my phone and go right to reading the Bible or all kinds of uh, pretty good material out on the internet. You, it, Google does not have all the answers. God does, okay? And the internet does not give us everything that's true. But uh, you, can, you can look and, and find some good stuff out there. And if, uh, if anybody in church does not have a Bible or you need a Bible or you want a different Bible, uh, you let me know. I'll get you one. My friend Tim Phelps and I uh, have been to Ollie's many times and I go there and just gobble up Bibles and hand them out to, to people who need a Bible. The main text is in Hebrews, but it's also going to be in the uh, book of Exodus. Uh, I gave you, there is an insert in there, not that we're going to use it, but I just wanted you to know uh, you, about 33 times, it depends on the translation, the word covenant uh, is used in the New Testament. If you go to the Old Testament, uh, if you're using the NIV, the word covenant, you'll find it 262 times in the Old Testament. So the Old Testament or the Old Covenant uh, has a lot to say about covenants. If you would happen to be using the 
uh, ESV Bible, which has become the standard Bible for some churches. Uh, I have one, but I don't use it. You would find the, the word covenant 323 times. And though I didn't count those, I have a Bible software program that searches uh, for whatever uh, I might want to, uh, to know. How many times is that word in there? So it's logical here to start in the Old Testament. Uh, there is really only one covenant that we want to look at, but, and that was the strange thing this week. I, I wanted to know how many co covenants uh, in the Old Testament. And depending on the source, there are eight or seven or six or five. And so they're skipping some of the, the covenants, like maybe uh, there's a covenant with Noah. Maybe they skip that. There's a, uh, a covenant with Adam. Maybe they skip that. I don't know. But the covenant in the Old Testament is right here in the book of Exodus. And I'm pulling a, a switcheroo on you this morning. And that is, I, I, I said last week, I would use the NIV because that's your pew Bible. And I will try to do that. But looking this morning, when I, I have my own uh, life application NLT, New Living Translation Bible, and with my notes in it and the uh, notes that come with it in the bottom, uh, when I've written in place, I just, I'm comfortable using that. So as you're following along in NIV, it's not going to sound exactly the same. But if you turn to Exodus chapter 19, and we're going to read, uh, not starting at the beginning of it, but verses uh, five through eight. And just to get an idea of the old covenant and how the people at first responded to it, the Israelites. So beginning in chapter 19, verse five. Now, if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all nations of the earth. For all the earth belongs to me and you will be to me a kingdom of priests, my holy nation. Give this message to the Israelites. And so then we read in verse seven that Moses returns from the mountain, called together the leaders of the people and told them what the Lord had said and verse eight, they all responded together. We will certainly do everything that the Lord asks of us. We are all in on this, God. We'll do whatever you ask. And we know that didn't uh, actually happen. And we're gonna jump over to Exodus 23, which means we're skipping over uh, one of two places in the Bible where you will find the Ten Commandments, and that would be Exodus 20, and uh, then Deuteronomy chapter 5. And, and that is as much uh, those Ten Commandments a part of the covenant as anything. So we go to 23, because I just want us to hear this again. And uh, verse 20 through the end of the chapter, we're not going to read all that, but God makes more promises and more reminders of commands. And so in Exodus 23, I'm going to jump down and start with uh, verse 24. And we have this. Do not worship the gods of these other nations, because as, as they were going into this land, that they were supposed to be their possession, do not worship the gods of these other nations or serve them in any way and never follow their evil example. Instead, you must utterly conquer them and break down their shameful idols. You must serve only the Lord your God. If you do, I will bless you with food and water and I will keep you healthy. There will be no miscarriages or infertility among your people, and I will give you long, full lives. So we see how this turns into a, a, a covenant. And then I jump down to verse 32, just the end of this. Make no treaties with these people. Have nothing to do with their gods. Do not even let them live among you. If you do, they will infect you with their sin of idol worship, and that would be disastrous for you. 
we see we see that today, don't we? Even in our our own country, maybe in a different way. But then, right here in, in chapter twenty four, first three verses. Then the Lord instructed Moses, "Come up here to me and bring along Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the seventy of Israel's leaders. All of them must worship at a distance. You alone, Moses, are allowed to come near to the Lord." The others must not come too close. And remember, none of the other people are allowed to climb on the mountain at all. When Moses had announced to the people all the teachings and regulations the Lord had given him, they answered in unison, here they are again, we will do everything the Lord has told us to do. Then Moses carefully wrote down all the Lord's instructions. Early the next morning, he built an altar at the foot of the mountain. He also set up 12 pillars around the altar, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he sent some of the young men to sacrifice young bulls as burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. Moses took half the blood from these animals and drew it off into the basins. The other half he splashed against the altar so we have blood introduced here. And then just uh, verse seven, then he took the book of the covenant. So he had written all this down and it's called the book of the covenant. And he read it to the people. They all responded again. We will do everything the Lord has commanded. We will obey. And that's about 1500 years before Christ uh, was born, came on, on the scene. Uh, and we're going to move, move then to the, to the New Testament. And uh, as we do that, so we're going to go over to Hebrews. What's in your, in your bulletin. Going over to uh, Hebrews chapter 8. And as we do that, uh, Let's think about what's wrong, what, what was wrong with the uh, old covenant? Well, ever since Adam and Eve were born, created by God, came into the garden uh, and sinned, we have been sinners, okay? We, we are born as sinners. And even in the Old Testament, uh, there's not a great many people who learn to uh, walk by faith. Nehemiah, by the way, is one of the great ones who, who learned to walk by faith. And so our, our sin nature, the weakness of our, our moral nature, we can't get into heaven on that. Never will get us there. They never got the Old Testament. The, Old Testament people are still coming in on, on the blood of, of Jesus Christ. But we come to the New Testament and uh, Hebrews, by the way, is one of my favorite New Testament books. Every time somebody were studying it and, and it used to be in like prayer reading, Bible study, and uh, reading it on my own, uh, it, it's a great book. If you haven't read Hebrews in a while, there's an assignment for you this week. I mean, it's a uh, 13 chapters, and it wouldn't take you half an hour, 45 minutes to read it. Beginning to end, it's great. Most of the book of Hebrews, a good bit of it, is really just explaining uh, why the Old New Testament or the Old Covenant failed and the New Covenant succeeds. Hebrews tells us about uh, blood having to be shed over and over in the old covenant but the the blood of jesus and that's the, the main point in here is shed just once that's that's all that needed to be done by the son of god covers our sins forever if we take him as our our lord and savior so let's read this part of chapter eight and we're going to read verses 1 through 13, and then we'll jump to uh, chapter 10, 
I'll just take a few verses there. <clears throat> I love the scene, but I have to remind myself at my age, if I sing and then get up here, I might have not have much voice left. And I, I take a cough drop every once in a while. I have a, I bring water with me and then leave it in the vehicle. But, uh, so I'll, I'll try to get through all of this. One through chapter eight, one through 13. Here is the main point after all of this uh, going through what, how the new covenant is different from the old covenant. Our high priest, who's that? Jesus sat down in the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. There he ministers in the sacred tent, the true place of worship that was built by the Lord and not by human hands. And since every high priest is required to offer gifts and sacrifices, our high priest made, must make an offering too. Verse four, if he were here on earth, he would not even be a priest since there are already priests who offer gifts required by the law of Moses. Verse five, they serve in a place of worship that, and you're going to hear this again, is only a copy, a shadow of the real one in heaven. For when Moses was getting ready to build the tabernacle, God gave him this morning. Be sure that you make everything according to the design I have shown you here on the mountain. But our high priest has been given a ministry that is far superior to the ministry of those who serve under the old laws. For he is the one, that would be Jesus, who guarantees for us a better covenant with God based on their promises. If the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no need for a second covenant to replace it. But God himself found fault with the old one when he said, and if you have cross-references verses in your, your Bible, um, but the writer of Hebrews, and I still think Paul is the author of Hebrews, I'm old, old school on that too. But uh, the, the rest of, from, from uh, rest of verse eight, all the way down through 13, actually 12, that's in the Old Testament. And so he's quoting Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. So Je Jeremiah, prophet near the end of the old covenant is, pointing toward the one who was coming. The day will come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors. When I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, they did not remain faithful to my covenant, but we heard them say, didn't we? We read with it. I, we will follow that. And we know they didn't. They did not remain faithful to my covenant. So I turned my back on them, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds so they will understand them. And I will write them on their hearts so they will obey them. I gave you three life verses of mine last week. The last one was Psalm 90, 12. Teach me to number my days that I may gain, what? A heart of wisdom. And, you know, here we are. God telling us, I will put my laws in their minds so they will understand and I will write them on their hearts so that they will obey them. I will be their God and they will be my people. And 11 is a problem verse for uh, many, many people. And it reads, and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their family, saying, you should know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the greatest will already know me. And it's, that, that sounds like maybe you and I don't have to go out and tell other people. But uh, when Jesus was ready to leave the earth, he said, 
the Holy Spirit would come and he will be your teacher and he will be your comforter. And I think that's the idea here. That that's the Holy Spirit. Any of you ever read the message? That's the modern day uh, paraphrase uh, that uh, Eugene Peterson wrote. I don't, there, I find a verse here and there once in a while that I think is good and the rest of it, I think, boy, he, he got off track on that one. But he took this 11th verse and he wrote this. They won't go to school to learn about me or buy a book called God and Five Easy Lessons. They'll all get to know me firsthand, the little and the big, the small and the great. And that would be through, you know, the Holy Spirit. Verse 12, this is still Jeremiah. And I will forgive their wrongdoings and I will never again remember their sins. Does that mean God forgets things? No, it means I will, you come to faith in Christ and you believe in his death and his resurrection and you become a new creature. There won't be, all, none of our sins will be held against us. If we come to Christ, okay? It doesn't mean as Christians, we still don't have to repent our of our daily sins that we have, but uh, I will remember their sins no more. And so then verse 13, when God speaks of a new covenant, and this is the whole point of this, and the new covenant is the better covenant, and it is a forever covenant. It means he has made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date and ready to be put aside. Do we still follow the Ten Commandments? And I, I read on that just this week. Andy Stanley has a book out saying we, we don't follow the Ten Commandments. I, I'm not criticizing because I haven't read it. You can't. But uh, I, so I don't know what it's about. But Jesus actually gave us the Ten Commandments. We, we put them all together, didn't he? In the two, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. That takes care of the first four. You will love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you won't do any of the last six in relation to anybody else uh, on the face of the earth. So uh, there are moral law that given the Old Testament, we still follow. Okay, we're going to go over to chapter 10. I'm going to read one verse, and that is uh, the very first verse. And again, reading the New, New Living, it simply says, the old system and the law of Moses was only a shadow of the things to come. There it is again. Not the reality of the good things Christ has done for us. The sacrifices under the old system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. We have a new forever covenant because the blood was shed once and for all by Jesus. And he came back to life again so that we have life forever. Now, the strange thing in this chapter 10, and this is, uh, you should, if you don't read the whole Hebrews, go on and read this. I, I couldn't make up my mind. If you turn down to chapter 19 in, in Hebrews 10, uh, from 19 through 25, that's a good ending. We could read that and quit. But then if you read the, 26 through 31, uh, we get chastened by God. It's like a kick in the seat of the pants. You read those words. So I'm not going to read either one of them. You go home and read it. But I'm going to, let's jump down to uh, verse 32 at the end of this. Don't ever forget those early days when you learned about Christ. Uh, do you remember when you came to faith in Christ? And it might not have always been easy, but 
but in some ways it was very special and different. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten. Now, this is the history of Christianity. We haven't gotten that far yet, but it's, things are changing here, aren't they? Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and you were beaten. And sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along those, the, with those who were thrown into jail. When all you own was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You know, you knew you had better things waiting for you in eternity. The forever covenant. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. No matter what happens, remember the great reward it brings to you. Patient endurance is what you need now. We do need that, don't we? So you will continue to do God's will, which is what we should be doing. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. When we hear in the Bible, a thousand years is a day, is as a day to God. A day is a thousand years. It's only been 2,000 years. It's only been two days. Going back to Jesus. And this little while, again, I, there may be somebody here older than I am, but uh, I'm going to turn 80 this year. And Billy Graham, when he turned 80, he was uh, talking to uh, students, uh, college students that had him in and they could ask questions. And one student asked him, uh, what is the most surprising thing to you about life? I think the question was something like that. And he said, the brevity of it. I can't believe I'm as old as I am. It's for in a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. And a righteous person will live by faith. But I will have no pleasure in anyone who turns away. There is a heaven and there is a hell. But we are not like those who turn their backs on God and seal their faith, their fate. We have faith that assures our salvation. And then if you went on, of course, Hebrews 11, one of the great chapters in the Bible, chapter uh, on faith. So we have a forever uh, covenant. And it's, eternity actually starts to begin here once you accept Christ the Savior. And then we will go on out. So this is a covenant church. And that covenant is with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy, Holy Spirit. And uh, let's bow a word of prayer. Father, you speak to us through your word. You speak to us uh, more through your word than you do from preachers, really. It's your word that anybody preaching or teaching has to bring to the people. And Father, we thank you for the truth about uh, the new covenant, the eternal covenant, the better covenant. And we thank you that you have loved us so much that you sent your only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are going to turn to another number at the end here. If uh, you open your hymnals to 368, 368, open my eyes and stand together.
continue to fill us. May your Holy Spirit open our eyes. May your Holy Spirit open our ears and hear your voice. And Father, may the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, open our mouths. We can witness with who we are, but we also, there's a time to speak up for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Can you put Holly on for just a sec? Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Christy. Hey, Holly. Hi. Hey, um, I sent out an email about our yeah. book thing. Okay. So yeah. obviously I'm not there. If you guys would just reply to the email, that would be great. Yep, I saw that. And I asked Sam about the link for Zoom. Yeah. And he said, oh, if you have any problems, let him know. But you be, we should be able to use the same link. Oh, okay. Great. So I guess if you try Thank signing you. it on later today, see if you can get in. We should. Yeah. Ready. Okay. I'll yes. I'll do that. Have any problems? Or have any questions? Okay. Thanks. All right. Christy, good to see you. Yeah. You too. All is well. Yeah. Good. Good. I've just been. It seems like every Sunday we're free. We're at my mom's lately. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It's good. And you start back yeah. in the tomorrow with children. Yay. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> except for me. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I hear you going uh, to uh, the jury duty. Yeah, yippee. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, okay thanks, good luck, guys. Cheryl. Thanks. All right. right. We'll I'm see you gonna, soon. I'm going to go over to Michelle's and eat my lunch. So I'm hoping to kind of cheer her up a little bit. So. Oh, that's 